Hi, Steve from Recall Knowledge here. For this Founder Quick Tip, we're going to look at how to use loot actors in your game. Now, why this is primarily using Pathfinder 2nd Edition as an example, because it's built into the core system, there are modules that accomplish a similar effect for other systems, such as D&D 5th Edition. A loot object is a type of actor intended to be interacted with by your players. They come in two flavors, loot and merchant. Loot objects are containers that your players can freely loot. Think treasure chests, dragon's hordes, uh, secret compartments in a dungeon, things like that. Merchants are containers that act as stores so that you can buy things and your coins will be deducted in the process. Being able to automate these things is going to be really key because in the virtual space, this is one of the biggest time killers and session flow killers that I've ever experienced. So let's start with how to configure a loot actor. So from the actors tab, we're going to click create actor. And then for the type, we're going to change it from player character to loot. And since we're teaching you how to make a loot, let's just make the tried and true treasure chest. So I'm going to type treasure chest in the name and I'm going to click create a new actor. The treasure chest loot sheet will pop up automatically. But next, we're going to want to assign an icon for the loot. Um, from here, let's just select a uh, for data, icons, containers, chest, and just pick a chest from the list that catches your eye. And now we hit select file and boom, our treasure chest icon is assigned. Uh, next up, we're gonna need to populate it with treasure, of course. To do coins, we're just gonna use the handy add coins button at the top. So I'll click that here. Um, let's add three platinum, 25 gold, 100 silver, and one copper for good measure. I'll click add coins. You'll see pop, 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 pop. All the coins are now added to the treasure chest under the treasure column, and they're ready for our party to loot. Up next, let's add some items, right? So what I can do here, I'm going to add a weapon. So under the weapons, I'm going to hit the magnifying glass, and it's going to open the compendium browser and filter it all the way to weapons. Um, in this case, I'm going to add something called a smoking sword. So I type smoking, we can see it here. So we get the smoking sword. I drag this to my loot sheet, and now the smoking sword is in the treasure chest ready to be looted. I can go ahead and close out of the compendium browser once I'm done with that. We can see it's populated, ready for looting by our players. All right, next up, let's add some treasure. So using the compendium browser for treasure, I'm going to click the magnifying glass. We're going to see it populates tons of pre-made treasure items that exist in the compendium already. I'm going to choose gold dragon and see that there's a gold dragon statuette that I want to give my players. So I'll drag that and it gets added right here to the treasure section of the chest, ready to be looted, just like the weapons and the gold before it. But let's say we need to make a custom item, something that doesn't exist in the current system like maybe a map or a handout of some sort. Well, we could do that too. So I can close the compendium. Under here, I'm going to click the plus button to create a new treasure item. Then we're gonna click the edit icon here and it's gonna pop up the edit dialog for this treasure item. So let's edit the icon to reflect what we're gonna make. In this case, we're making a map. So I'm gonna to go to icons, sundries, documents, and I'm going to pick one of these that I think looks vaguely map-like in this picture. And then for the name, I'm going to name it Dungeon Map. Next, we're going to reference a handout I've already created, which is the dungeon map itself. And we're going to edit that reference into the description of this treasure item so it'll be clickable by your players. So in this case, I'm going to go to my Journals tab. And I'm going to filter this out because I've already created something called Map. This is the boss strong map one. I'm going to make sure to click edit on the description of this treasure item. I'm going to just type, this is a map of the dungeon crudely drawn. I'm going to take the boss strong map one handout and I'm going to drag it into this space, which is going to create this sort of link. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the treasure and it saves it. By dragging and dropping that into the edit box, 
we've created a clickable link. So the next time I edit this, I'll see it actually has a link to that handout, which I can click here and see this is what it looks like. And in this case, when your players have the dungeon map in their inventory, they can click the link, have access to this image at any time they want. So we got the treasure chest made, but now we need to place the loot object on the map. So what I like to do is place them in or near the room. Depending on the room, you might not want it to get in the way of your battle. So all we need to do is find the room. In this case, I'm going to drag and drop it to this room down here. I'm gonna go back to my loot actors. I'm gonna find the treasure chest we made. And I'm gonna drag and drop it to the map, just like I would any other actor. Remember, it's just a type of actor. Once I have it where I need it to go, I like to right click it and do the toggle visibility option to hide it from the players. Once it's hidden, it's ready to go. As your players play the game, as they're in exploration mode or perhaps finishing up a very crucial battle, they find the treasure chest. You as the GM can now reveal it to them by unclicking this. And now they'll have the ability to click and dig through the treasure chest on their own. They will all be eager to click, open it, what's in it. They want to pour over the contents. It's a much more exciting experience for your players as opposed to you just reading out the list of items that they found. It's actually, they're able to drive the exploration of the chest in real time, something that's very hard to accomplish in the non-virtual space. So on the player's end, all they need to do to claim the treasure is to drag and drop it to either their token or their character sheet. Once this is done, it'll show up in their inventory and they can equip any of the items that they found. So we can see here from the player view, Clovis has found the chest. He clicks it to open it and he can see all the items that exist. I can drag and drop the smoking sword to my character token. And if I open my sheet, I will see under my inventory, the smoking sword is now there. I can now hit the equip. And if I go to my actions tab, I'll see the smoking sword is now there and I can make an attack roll with it like any other weapon in just a few easy clicks. And by doing this one simple task, you're going to take the immersion of your players to the next level. They will feel like they are actually there looting treasure chests in the dark dungeons. They will be really excited to click and see all the fun treasures they found. And they're going to be excited to go back to town to sell off the treasures so they can purchase more items. And as for merchants, well, that'll be the topic of my next quick tips video. I will show you how to leverage these loot objects to make fully functional stores within your Foundry worlds for your players to eagerly window shop. Until then, stay safe and take care. Hi, Steve from Recall Knowledge here. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like and subscribe down below so you can get notified of more awesome content coming your way. Also make sure to follow our channel's Twitter at Recall Knowledge for the latest information. Thanks for watching.